to be joined by John Webster, the Director of Instruction at the Breakers in Palm Beach, Florida. Good morning. Good morning, Paige. How are you? And it seems appropriate. You're from Palm Beach. We're in the beach. November is Play Better Bunker Month here at Golf Channel. So you're going to help us a little bit with our sand play. First thing, I love the bunker. And I know a lot of high-level players love the bunker, but I know a lot of amateurs are intimidated by it. Am I right? Well, I think for tour players, as you know, on a par five, sometimes you'll aim for a bunker because you know the lie is going to be what it is. You get in the rough, sometimes it could be a little bit different, so you want to know what to expect. But as an amateur, you go to different golf courses, you just don't know what the bunkers are going to be like, and they're inconsistent. So it can be a more difficult shot for an amateur than it is for a pro for a number of reasons. That's very true. We have a lot of consistency on tour, whereas uh, different golf courses have different level of consistency of the stand. How do you assess what you should be doing when you walk into a bunker you don't know? Well, first thing, you have to know the conditions. You have to know what equipment you're using and how it reacts with the sand. So first thing, when you do get into a bunker is, you know, what, is the, what is the sand like? Is it thick? Is it thin? When you first get yourself and into this bunker, you want to dig yourself in and just get a feel for just how thick it is originally. Um, if it's very deep, you know the club could get stuck. If it's very thin, you know the club could bounce out of it. So is there a uh, different things you can do in your golf swing to compensate for the sand when it's different with thickness? Oh, sure. Well, with a the wedge, there are different bounces. We can talk about that in a moment. Uh, the way the wedge reacts does uh, have a difference with different types of swings. But the first thing I would do is um, a bunker shot. You never want to hit the golf ball. So you have to know about the sand and how you make the sand move. So the first thing, and I learned this from the Harmons. This is really goes back to Claude Harmon at Wingfoot and how he used to teach. But he would say you really couldn't get the ball too far forward in your stance. You would always want it to be somewhere up just near your front shoe. Mm -hmm. um, with that in mind, you have to know where you're going to bottom out. So if there was a footprint of sand from heel to toe, you're going to be taking about a foot of sand. So you don't have to be exactly precise. You just have to get that area. So for most bunker play, once you dig yourself in, if you can maintain a little bit of weight on the front shoe, so that's the area you're going to be hitting, that's helpful. Too much movement side to side can be dangerous. OK, so it helps that the ball's forward, weight forward, and what else with the equipment? Uh, from that point, about. knowing the sand, if it's thin or thick, you, length of swing is important. Uh, you have to take a big enough sand or swing to get the sand up and out of the bunker. And depending on the wedge, that could make a difference. Well, I know we have another station set up over here at the simulator. So let's take a walk over Sounds and get out, of the, get out of the bunker. And, and more <laughs> importantly, once you get out of the bunker, too, just for etiquette, a little tap of the shoes before you get out. And you know that when you do that, don't hit yourself in the ankle. I think that was a Phil Mickelson thing where he may have actually done a little damage oh, at one point. I think we've all done that once or <laughs> twice. So what do we have set up here? Well, here's a lie board. Uh, typically for fitting wedges, it's something you do want to get checked out. So if you have the opportunity to get fit for a wedge, I think it's critically important. Um, the lie board and the golf ball, just for one strike, I'll show you. Once you hit the lie board, and if you do have a piece of lie tape, it's a great training aid as well. You'll actually see that with the lie board, it makes a little mark on the bottom of the club where the club hit. Now, in this case, it hit towards the back edge of the bottom or the bounce of the wedge. So if you held that up in the air, you'd say that the bottom of the club or the back of the club bounced or ricocheted off of the board. That tells me that I'm using the bounce effectively. That's going to help the club to actually get through the sand properly. Now, if you use the leading edge, that's going to tend to dig a little bit more. So in different sand conditions, that could be useful or it could hurt. So I would say in hard sand, you want to use the leading edge. You want it to dig. In very fluffy sand or soft sand, you want to use the back of the club or the bounce. Can you adjust your setup to, to be, better utilize the bounce? Absolutely. I would say that depending on the conditions, if I had to get into the sand a little bit deeper, the ball could be played slightly further back, but I'm cautious with that because you want to make sure you hit sand first. But you could lean the wedge just slightly forward. In doing so, you're going to give yourself a little bit more of a descending blow. And likewise, if you want to make sure that the club could get out of the sand, you may, with the ball forward, just have the shaft of the club leaning back slightly. And I think that's what you see most often with tour players. You may even see a tour player get down just a little bit lower with their knees. And as they lower the handle of the club down, that also exposes the bottom of the club to the sand and helps it to slide underneath. So many great tips and instruction. John, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you, Paige. And being with Pleasure. us. And if you want more great instruction like this, head to Golf Channel Academy Facebook and Twitter pages.